going around and trying to get some of the information that we have up online and easily accessible. The wireless keys themselves are Lando and one two three for the network name conference hall, and the same for restaurants. You can see it's Lando cards. We put together our wiki where we're trying to keep track of what's going on in the project itself. And there you'll see the rail that Jimmy the Wall redirects to the current working rail wiki page. The content is still evolving as it's coming out. And um, we hope that the teams will be able to go there and see some of the artifacts that we're looking around. And particularly, there'll be a link to the new agenda that's coming out. And I'll, I'll switch to that in a minute. We've also got the Twitter feeds for those who are socially connected and like to see what's going on. Or if you've got de delegates that are not here, I'd like to follow some of the sessions that are moving forward. Uh, Roger will be tweeting on our behalf, and we feel free to tweet on those sites. And in addition, if we actually start looking at some of the pages themselves, we have the meeting agenda up, and I know the agenda team will be evolved. We'll be continuing to evolve this in the days to come. But what we do have is now that Roger is video recording these sessions themselves, we're hoping to push these out to a YouTube channel. So those of us who couldn't be here or would like to come back to a particular session, uh, we publish that and put the links again. As well as there are some particular note pages. And last time that you were here, you were familiar with working with the JB Notes solution and Etherpad. And the link to that is, as you can see, is notes.jb.org forward slash rare, all lowercase. All that information is on the rare.jb.org page. And if you'd like to keep track of your minutes or any thoughts that you have in this year, that these minutes will then start to be compiled by Linda into the larger meeting minutes themselves. So we do have our teams from Amazon who aren't able to join us today who'd like to see what we're doing and we will direct them to follow the meeting as it evolves on these various pages. Right, I think that's pretty much most of the admin for the day. And just again to extend an invitation to everybody to the JB Rwanda office launch happening this evening. As Emmanuel mentioned, there will be shuttles leaving from the parking lot down at Shilando over here. And if you'd like to talk to the manual or Michelle or around the logistics on that side. Now really getting to the heart of why we're here and what we're moving forward with. So what I'm going to be doing today is just giving a bit of an overview of where we are with RAID for, for the new faces of the room, trying to give you a bit of a background context. If you've been at some of the RAID meetings before, these slides should look quite familiar and you should be, this should be old hand news to you. If you have any questions, uh, please raise your hand. I'm happy to take questions in and amongst the presentation itself. So the format for today will really be an overview of what's happened, where, where the project is, what, what are the objectives, where we've come so far, and that'll take us into the LHF project overview. And for those who aren't familiar with the acronym, it's the Low Hanging Fruit Project. Very good, very descriptive term in which you get us. I think it's been quite a fun project to work on and quite a pivotal project when we look at how the whole rare program evolved itself. And this afternoon we'll be handing over to Chris and the OHT and the Heart teams to give some overview of the actual health enterprise architecture frameworks and get some input from such a diverse team in the country. And we'll then break to move towards the agenda launch. So the RAIA project itself is an initiative of the Ministry of Health. Um, it seeks to develop, as you can see, an EA-based solution, an enterprise architectural-based solution for healthcare in Rwanda. And I am cautious of using the word enterprise architecture in front of Jane and Derek there. <coughs> It's instead of it putting me apart, but an EA is really a business approach to how do we want to see the health system that we want to be involved, not really the application architecture at this point, that's a deliverable of it. The initial funding came from the idea the IDSC and Rockefeller Foundation in when we first started the RAID project, and this phase of the project is very much funded 100 percent by the IPP initiative. So the objectives of the RAID project is really to focus on, an, on an implementation science research project to see how will EA-based solutions and the approach we're taking here reduce and uh, make a difference from maternal healthcare in Rwanda itself. Uh, the, what we're doing at the moment is implementing a pilot system to test this hypothesis and Paul is actually heading up the implementation science research aspect of this project and I'll, I'll unpack a little bit of the overall RAIL project and the sub-projects in a few moments. But to give a bit of context to where RAIA fits in and the um, landscape in terms of what we're working, many of you will remember the slide from Chris's presentation last time, and I think that we've got a wide range of teams here. It makes a lot of sense to just uh, represent it and make sure we understand where we're coming from. So moving from left to right over here, starting in the three large circles, we have the OASIS project, the Open Architectures and Standards Information Systems project, 
which was started by Chris and funded originally by the IDOC. And that was really looking at promoting this idea of open architectures and standards and information systems in the countries of uh, Mozambique, South Africa, and Zimbabwe. And that then also evolved into a wonder itself, the very early start of it. From, from that project, we then moved across to the original RARE project, which was developing the Rwanda Health Enterprise Architecture. And the work that the foundation work funded by the Rockefeller Foundation has created a platform to which the IPP project is now really working on top of and contributing back towards is the actual Rwanda Health Information Exchange project. Now, which in, within these larger circles, there are multiple sub-projects which are overlapping and you know, making quite a bit of a difference. We see that we have the HEAT project, which is the Health Enterprise Architecture Framework, and this is really led up by, by Dr. Kosirich from Jemby, and with many of us in the room here, looking at how does one apply some of the methodologies and frameworks around enterprise architecture, how are you able to refine them, and can they really be applied to your health system? So the work happening in both Mozambique and Rwanda has been, is being distilled at the moment towards the heap, and Chris will be presenting on that a little later this afternoon. And right below that, you see in, in the intersecting um, Oasis and Rail project, this is the Heart project, which is funded by Rockefeller and headed up by OHT, which we're happy to have the team here. And we get a presentation of really what Heart is. The, the acronym stands for Health Enterprise Architecture Repository of Tools. It's an online repository really allowing us to describe some of the artifacts that we, that we look for when developing systems like this or what we're producing from the work that we're doing in these projects. So not to steal too much thunder from the teams that we're presenting now, but put a pen in there. And moving on towards the actual IPP projects, what we're seeing is there is the, there's multiple projects listed within our current RAID HIE project. These include the technical assessment, which is headed up by Ed, the capacity development, which is an ongoing project, and part of the core of what the, the whole RAID initiative is, is to ensure that there is capacity in the country to ensure the, the continuous support of the project once the initial development is handed over. That's why Jamie Rwanda is very excited to be opening an office and officially launching it, although it's been running quietly for the last few months and a year at least. We've also got the implementation sub project and the implementation science project, which we've mentioned Paul leading up the implementation science, and myself and the Jamie team really focusing on rolling out the solution. And those, that solution is based on the requirements definition of scoping, which was headed up by Liz uh, the, uh, earlier this uh, in the past few years, and that's really looking at what are the requirements that everyone needs to ensure we get a solution to meet our needs. The work that's happened in both RAIA and the IPP have also allowed us to work with NETO on, and, and Derek, in fact, we're glad you're here, on the CHP project, the collaborative health platform, where this is a project that was using artifacts from three different, three different projects themselves, RAIA, the Cambodia project, and Zambia, the, the grouping correct. And they're looking at uh, refining out what is a mobile interoperability or mobile architecture would look like and what are some of the principles one should be looking at when you're trying to apply this in country. And the work that was done in that project is actually published on the Health and Power website, the Hub, if anybody would like to have a look at that. And one of the quite interesting projects that we, we've got, and Ryan mentioned a little earlier, is really the interoperability layer. And the interoperability layer is quite, an exciting, quite a special project, mainly because it forms the the heart of the, you know, the, the veins of the EA for the EA solution for Rwanda itself. But also that it's one of the pioneering projects when we're looking at an initiative taken up by the University of Kosovo-Natal, where there is a set up for a health enterprise architecture research laboratory, Heal Lab. And Ryan's project actually forms part of him, for, him furthering his studies and going for a postgraduate degree. So I think this is just a bit of an overview that I'm um, it's quite a grounding idea once you understand how RAID fits in and what it feeds to, what it's, where it, what it's built off of, the various parties involved, and just the diversity in the room itself. And this, this diagram will expand as the teams grow, as the projects and um, evolve, as new projects come on board, as old ones are closed off. But this will eventually become a bit more of a living document. As mentioned a little bit, there are quite a few funders and partners that we had involved in this itself, the IDSC. Uh, the Rockefeller Foundation and PEPFAR through, uh, through our IPP initiative. They are key funders that have been working with us. There's been many partners that have been involved, to name a few, the Ministry of Health of Rwanda, um, which we thank Richard for, the uh, Jamie South Africa and Rwanda, Perfect Access is a local Rwandan company. 
who JB is engaging with to facilitate some of the SNS based development work that needs to happen. The Heal Lab in the University of Brazil in Tom, which Ryan's project, as I mentioned, forms part of, and we are providing a lot of the architectural and deep computer science research and design paradigms which we're working within. Um, the uh, Beatrice team, Liz, the East Leader Group, was really involved in the first the first version of the project. We're looking at their software system. CDC, Regan Street, against their partners in health. I could go on to run through a lot, lot of these, but just to say that the RAIA project is we're quite a wide impact and we've got a lot of contributors towards it and we really do try to marshal those involved that we actually get a lot out of it and that there's a return to what you are invested in it. So then, what I mentioned a little earlier is that the actual RIA HIE has got five sub-projects within it itself and these are the capacity development project, the requirements and scoping, technical assessment, the implementation rollout and the implementation science project. And we've gone through a few of these at, at the moment. Um, here we see just a little bit of a description of each of the projects themselves. Really that, what I mentioned a bit earlier, the capacity development is focusing on building a team with Emmanuel and with Richard in country to ensure that whatever's developed is continuing to be supported, that it doesn't dry up if, if and when um, team members change in and out. The implementation science project is really to evaluate the effectiveness of this on a clinical level and a programmatic level. So you know, this, it's all fun and games putting down a fun IT system, but if it doesn't make a difference, why are we doing it? So that's what we're really moving, we aim to move towards and really excited to get, get that out there. Uh, the technical assessment project has been quite fundamental in evaluating some of the technologies that we've been using, we've been investigating, ensuring that as implementing partners and designers and developers we don't get stuck up on our own agendas, but really they're there to ask the hard questions. And that has been made by Ed with Paul and Sean and a few of the other team members as the time's gone on. As mentioned earlier, the requirements and scoping project is really what Liz, what Liz had up over the last eight, nine months last year, which we came down to find out what, do we, what information do we really need to, to actually accomplish the use case. Now, many of us in the room right now are still wondering what the use case for Rwanda is. Um, if, you haven't, if you haven't had an uh, experience with that, I'm just going to run through it very briefly. That the simplest way to think of the use case is to explain it by using the Mosa story. Mosa is a young mid 20s lady in a rural village in Rwanda, and she has a boyfriend. And um, they've been they've been sleeping together. And on the radio, most of it is about this idea that there's something called HIV. Oh, she has some interaction with it, and she's a little concerned concerned about it. She also at the same time finds out that her boyfriend's been sleeping around with other women. So again, escalating the fear of what that she may have contracted HIV. But instead of going to the local health centres to be tested and to avoid the stigma, most goes to far away villages to be tested. And unfortunately, most is found to be HIV positive. That information is recorded on a health system, an electronic medical record system in faraway village, which is health, health facility. Most of them comes back to a village, and a few months later, a community health worker who's doing her rounds uh, sees that most is pregnant and takes out her cell phone and sends an SMS to a dedicated number indicating that most of them is pregnant. Now, that, that SMS is then returned, uh, gets a return SMS saying that this is a high risk pregnancy, please refer to the local clinic for counseling and testing. Or for least for counseling, there's no, and it's key to know that there's no clinical information in that message itself. Most is then brought onto the local, goes to the local clinic, where through the health information exchange and the work that we're doing, that facility has a complete record, and including the visit she had in Faraway Village, and the doctor's able to treat her correctly. So the real concept is to share information, particularly in the maternal care area, that we can better facilitate the care and the health of both mother and child. So a little bit around the capacity building. Um, as we said, we've got the office open. The, we've got some new staff that have joined us since the last radio meeting. The two developers here in Rwanda, which we're quite excited to see them get into work. I'm going to run through a few of these quite quickly. I think one of the, quite a lot of it is very common knowledge to us. But this presentation will be available online and if anybody would like to go further uh, through in further detail. The Pulse Project is really, again, looking at the implementation of it. Do we make a difference? And what are some of the clinical outcomes that we're looking for, the impact that we see, and a quantitative study on, on, what, on you know, the clinician perspective of the information system. And I know that the, this study is being built out as we start to roll out for the next few months. But Paul, I'm sure you're going to have a lot of time to talk about some of the things you want to see coming out of implementation. 
So the requirements definition is the project that's been signed off, and one of the things to notice is with the change of the slight change in direction that we've had a revisit some of the requirements. So that's one of the aspects that we've we been working on the last over the last few months since the last RAIA project itself. A RAIA meeting, my apologies. And then the implementation project is really what's gone underway. The start of the low hanging fruit project, which is iteratively building towards the HIE solution we're looking to roll out in Rwanda in the long run. And that's a lot what we're going to be looking at today is what are we seeing and, what are we, and where are we going. Now, within the implementation project itself, it's important to note that there are various aspects to it, and the teams around here are quite diverse and have different agendas as we move forward. We've got the actual development and implementation and the physical rollout, which is going to clearly go into site, integrating the existing systems, existing workflows, and a lot of that will be headed up by the GMB team, coordinating with, with the Ministry of Health and Liz and Ron, and the teams are going to meet over the next few days. But focusing a lot of what this meeting will be spending some time around on the technical aspect is the various sub-development projects that we have running. The development of the interoperability layer, uh, previously known as the IHEX, and that's led by Ryan. The facility registry work, which is being coordinated by Michelle with Ed and Randy and Ryan, and we've got a large team and Liz in terms of putting that to ground. The client registry, the provider registry, the shared health record, and the terminology services. A very quick overview of what each of these are is the client registry is really just a database that holds the ID of the patients and within the system itself, it has some. The concept behind it is some very good intelligence which allows you to identify people take patients, ensuring you keep a single, uh, single demographic record for the person. The provider registry is again just a, a database uniquely identifying the healthcare providers within Rwanda. The facility registry is the same, we focus mainly on the facilities and the services that they provide. The shared health record is really the heart of the system, providing a centralized area where all medical observations for patients are stored centrally and disseminated down to the health facility as they needed. The interoperability layer is the, is the facilitation engine on the communication bus, allowing a standards-based communication mechanism into this uh, set of services, ensuring that any new, any new point of care systems coming on board have the ability to uniquely identify patients, providers, where they are, and share information that's been collected previously at other sites as well as the information collected at their sites. The point of care applications, as we mentioned, the, uh, these are the predominantly open MRS implementations that have been rolled out in the wonder itself, and the rapid SMS application that is used by the community health workers in their day to day care. And the terminology service is a database of codes that are published in Rwanda and particularly used in the EL services. How this all fits together in a very simple logical diagram, and this is one of the things that we often forget to put in our presentations after talking for around this for ages and ages, is really how does this all tie together. And for those who are here for the first time, um, this should be quite a new diagram to you for those who have seen it before, bear with me as we run through it again. But everything above the interoperability layer is centrally located. The Ministry of Health data centers or, or servers administered by the Ministry of Health under their governance. And all point of care systems, such as open MRS and rapid SMS, connect over the internet synchronously or asynchronously to the interoperability layer, allowing us to share information, identify providers, healthcare facilities, <coughs> clients, and the various technology they need. So within the course of this, the next few, four days, this is probably the biggest diagram that we're going to be talking towards, and contextually you should give you a feeling for what you're going to be seeing and where some of the discussions come around. It's also important to note at this stage that everything about the interoperability layer has a single instance of it. Everything below the interoperability layer can have multiple instances of OpenMRS all connected to it. So, so far today, we, at the last meeting, one of the keys we, we come to the decision was to use the ECHIS solution provided by EasyVita company out of Brazil. And this is a software solution based around a, the Brazilian, uh, Brazilian healthcare system. Um, we had some time interacting with the company itself. Uh, the JMB team with some of the equipment access team had gone across to Brazil to interrogate the code of the application, how it, how it would work, how feasible it would be, and a lot of investigation and investment went into pursuing this, uh, the ECHIS implementation uh, that we we're going to look at. One of the key things of the characteristics is that it was a centralized solution. And it, as you can see in this table, it provided um, some of the functionalities were all bound into one application, client registry, provider registry, facility registry, shared health record, 
All of these were in a single solution stack. Um, there, there was a lot of discussion around the merits and the demerits of this sustainability, the capacity of what's needed. A lot of discussion that happened up to date around where we were going. And as of the last meeting, we were pursuing this quite, quite aggressively to ensure the contract negotiations and the support services are well met. So a bit of a visual overview of the, of the diagram, what easy Peter would be providing within the whole architecture itself. This was the original solution with the client, the provider, and healthcare facilities web, street share health care would all be provided by a single application. And I know a lot of us with our um, service-oriented architecture have some might be cringing a little bit under that, or wondering what, what are we doing. But a lot of discussion went into it, and that was a solution we did take forward. Unfortunately, due to circumstances outside of our control, we and a bit more investigation discussion of the solution it is still under negotiation, if I understand correctly, Richard, but we've taken, we've been given the opportunity to follow a new direction. Um, really focusing on, on following a more iterative approach to implementation and uh, being more service orientated in a more modular design. And at the moment, we're also investing a lot in our Rwandan team to ensure that everything is built as is, has a hand in country to show the team to know what's going on and know how to use it going forward. So when we look at this itself, um, each of the blocks are now provided, provided the function is provided by a different solution, and the mapping of these solutions themselves is the interoperability layer. Ryan has been developing that using a customized Mule instance. Mule is an open source enterprise service bus uh, that the team has been customizing to work within Rwanda itself. The facility registry is being implemented on an application provided by Instead, the called Resource Mapper, and that's been customized with a lot of iterative support by Randy and Liz, Michelle, and the JMB team, and I'm sure Ed and Ryan will be showing us a little bit about some of these deliverables in, in the next few months. The client registry, there's a, everywhere you see a question mark, there's a, these are some of the questions we're looking to refine during this meeting at the moment. By the end of the meeting, we will have the answers to which technologies we'll be using so we can move forward on it. The client registry is a choice between both match and open EMPI to um, client registry applications. During the discussions with uh, Sean and Paul, we're hoping to hear a bit more about your insight and Sean, a lot of the work that you've done with the teams and see where we're going to go in the evaluation matrices and that. Again, the provider registry, we're also looking at these potentially using open EMPI or an IRS customization. We are aware that IRS is functioning in Rwanda at the moment um, and we have got our teams actually to see the merits of uh, customizing and building a new module on top of that or using a different application itself. The shared health record at this point in time, uh, considering the, that OpenMOS is probably the widest used application in Wonder, it's a very high container for use within the SHR. And the technology service, we've, we've made the choice to use Apple on DTS, and our team will be showing you some of the work around it, the Apple line of what we see in the coming out. Some of the key indicators that we're looking at when identifying software to use within the wonder is not always how functional the software is and does it work perfectly for its use case, but also what is the sustainability of it in country. It needs to be long living, it needs to extend just past the scope of this pilot, and there needs to be the ability to build capacity here to ensure the continued support of it that it builds a platform for the EL services to leverage off of. As I mentioned at the beginning of the workshop, um, we have got a working space at radiogenic.org where you'll be able to see a bit of the work that's, that's coming out and that's and that page, that page will be evolving as time goes on and led by Ron and Linda in front of me here. There you'll find the current high level design overviews, the current program plan and project plans, and we have various weekly calls, a project team call and facility registry calls for those interested in getting involved in that. And just a very high level overview, and this is something that I put up here as a, as a placeholder, knowing that we're expecting it to change over the course of this meeting. That by the end of the week, we are aiming to have a far more refined development and implementation plan that we're able to work aggressively towards the country itself. What we are seeing here is the work that Wayne and the team have done so far to bring out each of the sub projects, each of the services and software solutions to, to light. And one of the key things to look at is the iterative approach of various milestone based iterations. And this is following the idea of an agile, an agile development plan where we're heavily engaged with the users on the ground. And if Randy yourself can attest to the, the work that's happened under the Lohani Food and Facility Registries project, and I'm quite excited to hear some of the lessons learned around this project that we can ensure we don't make the same mistakes, we apply the same things that work in the projects moving forward. So, as an approach to Ray, this is how the technical side will be moving forward. 
Ron um, lives on Shrek and goes to be working quite a lot together to work out the implementation plans, uh, the rollout, and ensuring that we, we meet uh, all deadlines that are expected. And obviously, Rich, and everything that comes out, we want you to sign up against it. <laughs> and finally, for the remainder of the meeting, what we're going to be looking at is really reviewing the design decisions, what technologies we're using, how we're implementing them, some of the key, key points that the developers, the technical staff have, some of the, the questions that the programs and management team that we'll have about you know, where does it work, how do we do that, how does it, how does it come right, and also the various stakeholders. You know, what do we do? How does it affect you? What, what services are we providing? How can you leverage all of that? And what are the experiences of some of the teams trying to do that at the moment? As, as I mentioned, selecting the technologies and mapping the way forward on a technical, programmatic, and a full implementation of the road. I think that, that is the end of my presentation at this point in time. Uh, I hope you've got a good feel for where, what RAID is about. And for those of us who have seen the project evolve over the time, a summary of the direction and the, um, the, the shift in, in focus at this point in time and what has been driving where we're moving towards. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And if not, I'm going to hand over to the LHF team. I think we've got some time with your team that we can probably squeeze in the presentation. All right. So thank you, everyone. I'm going to hand over to Ryan.